Hi there, everybody, and uh, welcome back to more Physics 11. Today, we're going to carry on with our kinematics in one dimension uh, unit, and we're going to look at accelerated motion. So we talked about uniform motion, where the speed, sorry, the velocity of an object stays constant. And um, now we're going to look at uniform accelerated motion, where um, an object's velocity is changing. It's accelerating, meaning it's either speeding up or it's slowing down. So uh, first, just a couple quick definitions. So an acceleration is literally just the rate of change uh, in velocity. Now, so far we've seen that there are things called scalars and vectors, and sometimes there's kind of analogs. So for example, distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector. Um, speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. With acceleration, acceleration is, is a vector. There is no um, scalar version of acceleration that we're gonna look at, okay? Now keep in mind that with an acceleration, anytime an object's velocity is changing, it has an acceleration. And acceleration is kind of a strange concept. It seems really simple, um, but it turns out it's a little bit more complicated. So anytime an object's velocity changes, it is accelerating. So an example um, of a confusion might be, in everyday language, we use the word accelerating for speeding up and maybe we might use the word decelerating for slowing down. We're not gonna make that differentiation in physics. An acceleration is both speeding up and slowing down. And we'll see there's actually even other cases. So when the velocity changes in any way, we call that um, an acceleration. So um, the formula we can use here for acceleration, acceleration is going to be equal to delta V, and I'm gonna put a little arrow over that V because it's a vector, over T. And um, let's define a few of these terms. So clearly A is my acceleration. Uh, v is my velocity. T is, of course, time. But then you might not be familiar with this uh, little delta term right there. So that is the Greek letter delta. And what that means is, um, well, we call it delta. And it means uh, change in. So the change in velocity in this case. Now, anytime you want to measure the change in something, how much a quantity changes, it's always going to be equal to the final value minus the initial value. So final minus initial. So for example, uh, if you have $500 in your bank account at the, end, at the beginning of the day and you have $1,000 in your bank account at the end of the day, the change in bank account would be 1,000 minus 500, the final amount minus the initial amount. Okay, so let's do a few examples here um, where we uh, use this formula. So um, we've got here a, a sprinter starts from rest and reaches a speed of 12 meters per second in 4.25 seconds. So I think it's really important as we get into these problems here, we're going to use to a, a bit of a, a couple of strategies that we're going to use whenever we're solving these problems. I know right now the math isn't too tricky and it seems like we can just throw numbers into the formula and then crank out an answer and get it. And you probably can for these problems. But believe me when I say that these are gonna get more complex and more conceptual as well. So one strategy that's gonna be really, really helpful that I'm gonna kinda of insist upon from now on is that we're always gonna draw pictures um, whenever we have a problem to solve. So a sprinter here starts from rest. So I've got a sprinter just kinda of standing around, maybe hands on his hips, getting excited. And they start at rest and then they take off and start running. And they, um, they start from rest and reach a speed of 12 meters per second in 4.25 seconds. Here, my velocity is just zero. But by the end of this, my velocity is going to be 12 meters per second. And so we could differentiate between these two um, velocities. You could call this initial and final, or you could call this 
V0 for V at time zero, or you can call it V1 and V2. Um, it doesn't really matter what you wanna do. For now, if you like, let's just call this initial and this final. We might use some different notation later, but that might work for just now. So um, the, we've got a picture, we've got a clear idea of what's going on here, and then now we're gonna go to our equation. So um, acceleration we know is a change in velocity over time. And we said that a change in velocity is really gonna be like V final minus V initial. So to find the difference of the two. Now in this case, that's not really exciting because they started off at rest. So the change in the velocity, if V initial is zero, I could kind of actually just get rid of this. I could kind of pretend that doesn't exist because that's really just gonna be zero. And so I could calculate that by just taking the final velocity and dividing it by time. So basically we um, reached 12 meters per second in 4.25 seconds. And so if I just get my calculator out here, I can calculate that and I get 12 divided by 4.25, and that's gonna equal 2.824. Now, uh, I am gonna round that off to sig figs, and when I look back, I can see that my original numbers had two or three sig figs, so I'll just call it two, and I'm gonna call that 2.8. But I need to know the units. We haven't looked at that yet. So the units for acceleration, let's go back to our formula, is meters per second divided by seconds. Meters per second divided by seconds, that's gonna be like meters per second per second, which is kind of a complicated way of saying it. So instead, what we'll say is meters per second squared. It's how much your speed is changing over time. So the units here are gonna be meters per second squared. Okay, let's look at uh, another example here. So a car starts for rest and accelerates at uh, 15 meters per second squared for 3.0 seconds. So again, now to draw these pictures, you, your artistic skill has to be at least as good as mine. And so what you need to know is this is what every car I've ever drawn since kindergarten looks like. And I don't plan on changing anytime soon. So if you could draw a car at least that nice, then I shouldn't hear any grumbling about having to draw pictures. Um, okay, so this car starts off, we know it starts off and it's not moving. So maybe V initial, I'll just call that zero. But then eventually this thing is scooting along at, mm, I don't know, I don't know how fast it's going. But I do know that the whole time it accelerates, so it has this acceleration this way, and that acceleration is 15 meters per second squared. So think about what that means for a second. You can even solve this conceptually without even cranking the numbers into the formula, although we will do that in a second. If something speeds up at 15 meters per second per second, that means that every second that goes by, it's going 15 meters per second faster. Well, after one second, it would be going 15. And after two seconds, it's going uh, 15 plus 15 is 30. And then after three seconds and so on. So you can, you can probably just even rationalize this out, how fast it's going. Um, and that's not a bad idea to keep in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and use my equation, which is A equals delta V over T to solve it. And we'll probably end up with the same answer you intuitively end up with. Remember that this is the same as V final minus V initial over time. But in reality, this initial again is zero. We're starting off at rest. So if that is zero, then this whole thing is just really, acceleration is just final velocity over time. Now this uh, formula here is something I can solve algebraically. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna solve this, I'm gonna isolate V final. And so I'm gonna do that by multiplying both sides by time. And then this would cancel out and I get V final is just gonna be acceleration times time. And remember that's true because the, um, the, final, the initial velocity was zero. And so the acceleration is 15 meters per second for three seconds. And I actually do that without a calculator. 15 times three is gonna be 45. Now, um, let's think about our sig figs, two sig figs and two sig figs, so we'll leave it as two, that's good. And then let's think of our units. I did meters per second squared times seconds. One of those seconds is gonna cancel out and leave me in meters per second, which makes sense because I was finding a velocity in the first place, so that looks good. All right, uh, last but not least, we've got a snowboarder 
traveling at eight meters per second, how long will it take her to reach 36 uh, meters per second if she can accelerate at a rate of 3.5 meters per second squared? Okay, so here's where the challenging art comes in. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, maybe with a little toque there. Yes, already moving, but then kind of zooming down this hill and moving faster as time goes on, accelerating <laughs> for some reason, has a larger head they're going so much faster that their head grows that's fine uh and so what do we got here well i know the initial velocity i know the initial velocity they actually start at eight meters per second and then they end up the final velocity is uh 36 meters per second and as they're kind of cruising down this hill it looks like they're speeding up the whole time so i kind of got this acceleration this way of uh 3.5 meters per second squared so um, my formula, acceleration equals change in velocity over time. In this case, I'm actually looking for time. So I can just go ahead and isolate that algebraically first. I'll multiply both sides by time, multiply by time, and that's gonna cancel out the t. And then I've got at equals delta v. So my next step is to divide by acceleration, divide by acceleration, that cancels out. And my formula becomes, T is equal to delta V over A. Well, don't forget delta V is a change in, so that's like V final minus V initial divided by acceleration. And my final was 36.0 minus 8.0 all divided by 3.5. Now just be really careful, the way I've written it here is great, but when I go to put this in my calculator, um, if I just punch this in directly as is, I'm gonna get an error, okay? <clears throat> this whole thing needs to be divided by 3.5, so if I wanna put it all in one go in my calculator, I need brackets around that whole thing there. So I can do that, I can do bracket 36, I'm not gonna put 0 0.0 because the calculator doesn't know the difference, minus eight, close bracket, and then I'm gonna divide by 3.5, enter, and I get an answer of eight. So my calculator tells me the answer is eight. Now, just checking my sig figs, I can see that <clears throat> I'm good to two sig figs, so that would be 8.0. And think about your units here. This was meters per second divided by meters per second squared. And that's actually kind of tricky to, to think about what the answer would be for units. But I can look back and say, well, I was solving for time, so this must have come out in seconds. As long as I had my base units the whole time, then that must be it. So that's how we use the formula, and it's really not that much more complicated than when we looked at, say, the speed formula or the velocity formula. Um, but acceleration, as I mentioned, is a tricky concept. And so this is one of these things that we're going to look at, and we're going to kind of come back at, and we're going to come back at again, because when you first hear it, it's just, it's probably not going to quite make perfect sense. So remember that all vectors are going to include a direction. And just as our, our, our baseline, as our go-to, when we think of the xy plane, we're gonna think along the x-axis to the right is going to be positive. That's like our positive x. And in the y direction, up is going to be positive. So any vector that's up or to the right, we'll think of that as being positive. And in the x direction, left is negative, and in the y direction, down is negative. So down to the left will be negative. And we'll see later that we can actually play with that. We can, we can flip our axis around and pretend that down is negative. But just to make things simple, I'm always gonna use that basic assumption that um, to the right and up is positive and down or to the left is negative. Now, an object's velocity and acceleration can be in different directions. And this is one of the things I was kind of getting at that I think sometimes confuses people when they think about acceleration. We don't have to be accelerating in the same direction that we're going. And another thing that often confuses uh, students is um, a positive acceleration means a positive change in velocity. A negative acceleration means a negative change in velocity. And that statement is not the same thing. It is not the same thing as saying that a positive acceleration means speeding up and a negative acceleration means slowing down. Those are not the same things 
as we'll see in a moment here, okay? So what I want you to do is take a second and, and complete this chart, and I really want you to try this. I want you to hit pause and actually try and do this on your own because it is a really confusing piece, and this is gonna help maybe unearth some of the misconceptions that we have, okay? So hit pause and try and do this chart where think of each of these situations, and all I want you to do is put either a plus or a minus sign for the velocity and the acceleration. So if you think the velocity is positive, put plus. If you think it's negative, put minus. And then the same thing with the acceleration. So in each of these cases, put a plus or minus. Hit pause now and try that, okay? And then we'll come back to the answer. Okay, now that you have definitely tried this on your own and you're not cheating and just letting the video run, let's see what the, the results should be, okay? A car sitting at a stoplight hits the gas. If a car is just sitting there, not moving, and then hits the gas. To me, it sounds like they're moving forward. And uh, when you hit the gas, you're moving faster and faster in the forwards direction. So your velocity would be positive because you're moving forwards. That's the positive direction. And in this case, you're speeding up as you're going forwards. So your acceleration is going to also be positive. You're getting more and more positive velocity. So that sounds good. Now, from rest, you back out of your driveway. Again, imagine a car sitting there at rest and not moving, and then you kind of hit the gas going backwards. And as you go backwards, your velocity, I guess, would be negative because you're going backwards. But you're speeding up in the backwards direction. Your velocity is getting more and more negative. That means your acceleration is also going to be negative. A plane, okay, let's try the next one. A plane uh, lands and comes to a stop. So imagine a plane coming down on a runway, hits the runway, and after it hits the runway, it's going really fast, but then it slows down and it stops. So as it's going forward on the runway, just about every plane I've ever been in flies forwards, not backwards. So if we think of the forwards direction as being positive, then as it's moving forward, its velocity is positive. Now it is slowing down and stopping. So even though it's going forward, its acceleration is in the negative direction because its velocity is changing in the negative direction. Yes, it's going forward, but it's slowing down. And so our acceleration would be negative. Okay, and then think of this one. You drop a, a rock off a cliff. So you drop a rock off a cliff, it's not moving, you let it go, and it starts moving downwards. And it goes downwards faster and faster. It's, it's speeding up as it falls. Well, it's going in the downwards direction, so its velocity is negative. And it's getting faster and faster in the downwards direction, but the velocity is a bigger and bigger negative number. It's going negative 10, then negative 20, then negative 30, and so on. So the acceleration is also going to be negative. Even though it's getting faster and faster, that velocity is increasing in the negative direction, so the acceleration is negative. And now for this one, throwing a rock straight up in the air. You throw a rock up in the air, um, and it goes up, and then let's just think of it as it's on its way upwards. So it's going upwards, and it's slowing down. Well, if it's going upwards, that means a positive velocity, because the upwards direction is positive. But as it goes upwards, it's slowing down, it's being pulled down, it's being accelerated by gravity. Last time I checked, gravity worked in the downwards direction, so the acceleration is negative. If you had a positive acceleration, then you would throw the rock upwards and it would just go faster and faster in the upwards direction. That, that doesn't make sense, okay? So sit on some of that. Some of that might be a little bit confusing, but we're going to break this down in class when we, when we chat about it, okay? Um, the other thing you can do, and we'll do this next section actually in class where we, we graph some things out, okay? So um, that's it for now about it.